I've said it before, I will say it again, we can't balance the budget on the backs of the very people who have borne the biggest brunt of this recession. Everyone's going to have to chip in. Everyone's going to have to chip in. That's only fair. That's the principle I'll be fighting for during the next phase of this process. Joining us now to make his case is Scott Silverman. He's chairman and CEO of Applied Digital Solutions. That's the parent company of Verichip. And, and Mr. Sullivan, Silverman, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. We're looking at this little chip right here. You brought some in with us, tiny little things. But what we heard yesterday was kind of scary. How do you, how do you react to that? Well, Becky, thanks for having us back on the air. We appreciate that very much. And obviously the comments that were made yesterday is the reason that I'm sitting here today. As right. you know, Verichip has been approved by the FDA as a Class II medical device. Verichip has been approved by the FDA as a class 2 medical device in order to identify high-risk patients in an emergency situation. It's elective, it's voluntary, and it is certainly critical to the evolution of information technology in healthcare, which we all know is archaic, the way healthcare is done today in emergency rooms and physicians' offices. Do you hate it when you get to the office and then discover you left your ID at home? Well, one company in Sweden has come up with a unique way to make sure that doesn't happen. A microchip implant. NBC's Keir Simmons is in Stockholm this morning with more on that. Keir, good morning. Hey guys, good morning. You've seen it in the movies. A human being merges with a computer to become a so-called cyborg. Well, I have now had a computer chip inserted into my left hand. It cost around $300. And in a moment, in what will surely be a live television first, I'm going to open a door with my cyborg hand. We're going to put a man inside a machine. Okay, so they're not going to turn me into Robocop, but here in Sweden at this high-tech office block, they're going to inject a computer chip into my hand. And this is the guy who's going to do it. Are you nervous? I am nervous. Yeah. Yes. You don't have to be. It's not going to be that bad. Really? Because that's a big needle. Okay. Cecilia Osterholm starts her day with this new technology. She swapped her keys for a chip in her hand that uses a radio signal to open doors. You have a chip in your hand there? That's right. It's been inserted there. Right. So that's how do you open it? Just like that. So obviously what I really want to know is how much it hurts. It does hurt a little bit, but um, it's like a basic vaccination shot, so it's not too bad. Her office, Epicenter in Stockholm, connects big corporations like Microsoft with fast-growing companies. And for the first time in a workplace, all 700 employees here have been given the chance to use the technology to become more efficient. So if you hold the phone against my chip, right. you will get my contact details. Look at that. That's you. In the movies, from Matrix to Minority Report, we've watched technology take over our lives. It's a smart house. It even happens in Annie. Think it and, it shall appear. and now it's coming true in real life. If you don't need keys to access your building, if you don't need credit cards or pin codes and things like that to do purchases, those are things that will really simplify your life. Life for me was about to get simpler. And you know what they say, no pain, no gain. So the chip in here is quite small, right? Yeah, it's super small. It's, it's like a grain of rice. So take a deep breath and exhale. Ow. Ah. And with that, I became part man, part machine. Right, cue the superhuman music, guys. Here comes the big reveal. Here on my left hand, you can still see the mark is where that chip has been inserted into my hand. Now I am going to take this cyborg hand. I'm going to place it up against the reader here. There's a little blue reader that is looking at the chip in my hand. Vera chip, subsidiary of publicly traded Applied Digital, has added Tommy Thompson to its board of directors. The company hoping the former Health and Human Services Secretary can help accelerate the use of RFID for healthcare and security applications. Joining us to discuss the future of RFID and his plans for Verichip, Tommy Thompson, former Health and Human Services Secretary, and Scott Silverman, Chairman and CEO of Applied Digital. Gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, being with us. Well, thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be on your program. Ms. Thompson, I'll start with you. Um, 
we're we're doing a poll today. Would you have one of these things implanted in your arm or I don't know under your scalp or wherever you put it? <laughs> you put it in your right arm, and it's very small, and it doesn't uh, bother you at all. But it certainly is going to allow you to identify. Uh, the, who you are, uh, protect your child. If uh, you have a new child that's born in, in a nursery, you can protect that child from having somebody walk off of it. You can also protect your loved ones in a nursing home so that uh, you can put a bracelet on and identify that individual and be able to find that individual if that person wanders away. But I certainly would, and I think it's the coming thing. And the problem is, is that medical technology is so far behind that RFIDs are going to really be the impetus in order for us to get new technology in the medical field that's going to help people uh, improve their quality of care. And that's what it's all about. And I'm sorry, sir, did you just say you, you would get one implanted in your arm? Absolutely, without a doubt. Okay. That's it. No concerns? No, no. concerns at all? Because I, I have to admit, I, it makes me a little queasy, makes me worry what well, happens if it gets dislodged. Well, Am well, I being well, irrational? Well, no, but just, just think of this. Now, if you were, wherever you are, if you're traveled, you're in New Jersey now and you're interviewing me in Washington, D.C. Right. Can you imagine if you were in Washington, D.C. and had an accident or had a stroke and went into the hospital, how long would it be before your records could get down here? How long would it take to be able to find out what sort of meds you're on or what allergies you have or what are you allergic to? To. But people right now just use cards that are in their wallet. They carry around cards that say what my blood type is, if I have any the, allergies. But the truth of the matter is, the doctor doesn't know that, and the emergency ward certainly wouldn't. And the problem is, is that technology is so far behind in the medical field that people are dying every day because of the lack of technology. The 98,000 people died last year because of mistakes in hospitals and clinics across America. And a good share of those mistakes could have been prevented by technology. Our FID is at the cutting edge of new technology is going to help to improve the quality of health and the quality of care for all Americans. Mr. Silverman, what about privacy concerns? Hi, Mark. Thanks for having us back again. I appreciate it. The the privacy issue associated with RFID technology really disappears because Verichip is a voluntary product that is used by a patient for specific, me specific medical ailments such as dementia, such as medical device recipients that need to identify their devices and their medical records, such as cardiac care patients and diabetic patients as well, who will voluntarily receive a Verichip as they've started to receive them in the North Jersey area where Hackensack University Medical Center has adopted the system. How many people have these uh, embedded in them? I shouldn't say embedded, but put in them. <laughs> We've sold approximately 7,000 Verichips across the world right now. We believe that 2,000 of them approximately have been injected across the world either for the medical or the security application. In the United States, we believe the number to be approximately 40 to 50 at this point, which all have occurred 40 since... 40 to 50 people. Correct which all have occurred since the FDA clearance of the product when you had us on back in October, yeah. and then the rollout of the infrastructure in a number of hospitals in the Northeast region, which we look to expand the hospital infrastructure to 20 to 25 hospitals or emergency rooms by the end of 2005, and up to 200 emergency rooms by the end of 2006. Uh, if I could turn to Secretary Thompson, just ask a quick question about your old job. Secretary Thompson, yeah. you, were, you were quoted last December as saying uh, uh, you have to assume that sometime in the future one of our countries, meaning the larger developed countries, is going to be hit by a bioterrorism attack. I assume you saw a, an article in the Wall Street Journal yesterday yeah. detailing failures, at least uh, thus far, in developing from U with the U.S. government's help um, new vaccines and drugs to counter biological threats and I'm curious to get your uh, your reaction to that. Well I think the story uh, is somewhat correct uh, it's, uh, but you gotta realize that the United States was starting from nothing and the Department of Health and Human Service passed the BioShield uh, protective legislation in order for industry to start coming into the field to produce new vaccines and new countermeasures. It's in the embryonic stages, but I think you've got to realize it's a giant step forward to where we were. We still got a long ways to go, and I still am very concerned about a bioterrorism attack. Uh, Mr. Silverman, we're almost out of time, so I'd appreciate brief answers if you could, sir. Sure. Uh, can, can you update the information on this chip? Because, of course, health uh, health uh, uh, conditions can change. You can develop diabetes, whatever. Yes, absolutely. The chip itself, Mark, has only a 16-digit identification number, and the information for your medical record databases is kept on a database that you mm -hmm. can update via the Internet. Okay. Uh, and does your company make the implantable chips for pets? 
Yes, we do. Okay. We do it for pets, we do it for livestock with the National Identification Program, and we do it for people. Because it just occurs to me, I mean, my kids are old enough to be able to be found, <laughs> but it occurs to me I've got them in my dogs. Why wouldn't I have them in small children, too? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's our honor. Thank you very much. Tommy Thompson, former Health and Human Services Secretary. Scott Silverman, Chairman and CEO of Applied Digital. Don't forget to vote in our Squawk Back question. Would you implant or have implanted an RFID chip? Uh, they uh, slide it under your skin of your arm. You don't even know it's there. Log on to squawkblog.com. Do you say, yes, I do it, or do you say, I'm with Becky? No way.